Hello everyone, with this Photoshop tutorial I want to show you how you can make use of negative dehaze and clarity to add a very dreamy effect on your images. If you want to follow along make sure to grab the raw file from the link in the description of the video and now let's jump into it. So for the purpose of this tutorial we will be working in the camera raw editor for the raw adjustments. This means everything I will be doing here can be done in Adobe Lightroom as well. So as mentioned, we are working with an HDI image. That means we do have a lot more dynamic range to bring down those highlights and raise the shadows as we want. First, however, I want to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. And this is already the first step to get started with the dreamy look since Adobe Standard will lessen the contrast very slightly. Now let's expand the basic panel. First off, I do want to adjust the white balance a little bit, making the image slightly warmer. So let's raise the temperature and this will just introduce some more yellow tones. Then next up, I am going to continue reducing the contrast. That's usually not something I am doing, but for this exact dreamy effect, it works really, really well. For the same reason, I'm going to bring up the blacks. And as we raise the blacks, you can see how we are giving the image a very, very soft look. Now, obviously, the highlights are still way too bright. You can also see that looking at the histogram with a huge spike in the overexposed area. And of course, that's because of the sun in the center. So we can carefully fix it by bringing down the highlights. I don't want to get rid of all the overexposure since I think it looks quite good. So I do want to keep some of it in the image, just like that. Overall, it looks quite good. Now I do think the shadows are a little bit too bright and I do want to introduce some more darkness. So I'm going to bring down the shadows just a notch. And doing this will reintroduce some contrast as well. So just be aware of that. Now we have set up the base exposure. Everything looks quite good so far, but at this point we can make use of negative clarity and negative dehaze for a very, very dreamy glowing effect on top. So let's just bring down the clarity and I'm going to drop it quite a bit actually. And you can see how this will reduce the details of the image. In this case, that is very, very helpful since there are a lot of smaller things going on. And in fact, those can be quite a bit overwhelming for the eye. So bringing down the clarity helps quite tremendously for this case. Now, while reducing the clarity makes the image a lot softer, reducing the dehaze will add a little bit of some, let's call it artificial haze on top of the image. And thus we are getting this glowing effect, which looks so good on this shot. Just keep in mind, if you bring down the dehaze, this will also raise the brightness of the image. So you might want to further adjust the exposure after bringing down the dehaze. But this is looking really good so far. Let's compare to the original image. So here with all the details in the foreground, and here with the added glow on top of everything. Looks so much better. Now, what this image is missing is some colors. So for that purpose, let's bring up the vibrance and I'm also going to introduce some saturation here. Great. I'm quite happy with how this is looking, but I do want to apply some masking. So let's open up the masking panel and I mainly want to focus on the foreground. So let's grab a linear gradient and just target the floor of this forest like this. What I want to do here is to just bring up the contrast very, very slightly, making the shadows a little deeper. And at the same time, I do want to bring up the whites, introducing some more brightness to the brightest parts of this foreground section. Wonderful. Then there's one more thing I want to do. And again, I'm using another linear gradient just for the very near foreground. And what I want to do here is to restore some details, giving this area right there a very sharp look. And I'm doing this by restoring some of that clarity we have taken away earlier. So let's bring it up quite a bit. And by doing this, 
we still have that glow effect in the distance while the foreground looks quite sharp and nice this way. And that's all there is to it with the masking. From this point on we can do a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I want to go right into the saturation tab, bring up the green saturation some more. And I also want to head into the luminance tab. And here I'm going to bring down the green saturation, which will just make those green color tones a little darker. Just like that. Wonderful. Now that's all there is to do with the color grading. I'm not going to add any split toning. I'm not going to change the calibration. And I don't even think I want to add sharpening to this image since I want to keep this very soft effect. So all that's left to do are a few Photoshop adjustments. This means we are opening up this object. First, I do want to apply a little bit of dodging right there in those brighter areas, making them even brighter. For that reason, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm switching the blending mode of that layer to overlay since I want to dodge. Now with this layer, what I'm usually doing to target those highlights is to use the TK panel plugin. But I think we can do it in another way. So I'm going to select the main image in the layers panel and then I'm hitting Shift Alt 2, which will select all the brightest areas of the image as you can see. Now with that selection active, let's go back to our overlay layer and with that layer selected, let's hit the layer mask icon. This way we are applying this selection as a layer mask on the overlay layer. Now grab the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to white and let's bring down the brush opacity just like that. And now we're just painting in over all those brighter areas in the foreground to make them even brighter. And as an example, I can safely paint over the shadows without affecting them since we have masked them out using that layer mask. So that is looking really, really good. Quite happy with that. At this point, we are almost done. I, however, do think I want to play around with the Nick Collection plugin a little bit. So let's merge those two layers. I'm hitting Control Shift Alt E for that. And actually before heading into the Nick Collection plugin, let's clean up this tree branch in the distance. This is really distracting. Just like that, wonderful. Okay, with the image cleaned up, let's head into Filter. Nick Collection Color Effects Pro 4. All right, and what I want to do here is to add the Glamour Glow effect. You can see on the right side, I already have set up the Glamour Glow effect, adding a little extra glow, bringing down the saturation some more, but at the same time, adding a little more warmth to the glow effect itself. So that is the image without the Glamour Glow effect and here with it applied. I hope you can see why I really love this plugin. So let's apply this effect. Hit OK. Of course, at this point, it might be a little too strong. So we could bring down the opacity a bit just to reduce the glow strength. But I think this looks really, really good. Now, one more thing I want to do is to bring back some of that saturation right there in the center. So I'm doing this by creating a vibrance adjustment layer. Here I'm bringing up the vibrance quite a bit. And at the same time, I'm going back to that layer mask and hit Control I. This will invert the layer mask and thus the added vibrance will not be visible anymore. So now I'm grabbing the brush one more time and let's bring up the brush opacity. And now I'm just going to paint over that layer mask and bring back some of that saturation right in the center. Wonderful. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.